Oh man, I'm gonna see if I can get this done in one take because I don't like laying on the floor that much, but uh, this seemed like the best way to film this, just given the resources I have at my disposal. You've been on the internet, you're on the internet right now, and uh, you've seen that people, when they talk about ethanol fuel, it's a, it's a contentious subject. Um, people have opinions because of the politics of it, the economics of it, the environmental aspects of it. We're not talking about any of that stuff right now, none of it. We're not talking about any of that stuff right now. We're talking about going boom inside your engine and how that works chemically. So um, I got these candies here. They represent the various different atoms that concern us in this regard. So I'm using the black ones to represent carbon. I'm using these blue ones to represent oxygen. I'm using these uh, orange ones to represent hydrogen and the yellow ones to represent nitrogen. This represents gasoline. Now this is one specific molecule that's in gasoline. Gasoline is actually a range of molecules. This one represents uh, octane, which is eight carbon atoms and 18 hydrogen atoms. And I remember hydrogen is really, really tiny. It's the smallest atom there is. So even though this is numerically what the ratio looks like for one particular molecule that's in gasoline, by mass, this is what it looks like. See how it's mostly carbon? Ethanol is a specific molecule. Unlike uh, gasoline, which is a range of molecules, ethanol is a specific molecule. And one thing you'll notice in here is that we got this little blue guy. There's an oxygen atom in every molecule of ethanol. And so here's by numbers what an ethanol molecule looks like. And here is by mass what it looks like. See how much blue there is in there? Now as far as how that looks, and this kind of gets to the whole point of why uh, when people say, oh, well, ethanol has less BTUs per pound. It does, it has less BTUs per gallon, but it also makes more power, and we'll get to that in a minute. The difference here is that you can see that when you get a given volume of pure petroleum, you got all this hydrogen and carbon. When you buy the same volume of ethanol, you get all this hydrogen and carbon and oxygen, and that looks kind of like this. When you separate them out, basically here's Here's your gasoline, and here's how many hydrocarbons you have in an equivalent volume of ethanol. And that's where your difference in BTUs comes from. I'm not trying to get that deep in this, I'm just trying to do a quick explainer video so that it's easy to grasp. The other difference then is, this is your leftover oxygen atoms. These are available to combustion in there. That's the whole reason that the stoichiometric ratio, that's like the ratio of air to fuel, is different on ethanol versus on petroleum. It's because this oxygen, that you get in the fuel is available to combustion. So that's why you make more power with it too, because all this extra oxygen that you get into the combustion chamber, it doesn't have to get pulled in through the air cleaner. It doesn't have to get pulled in through the intake valves. It does have to get pushed out through the exhaust. That still has to happen. But you gotta remember also that you're sucking in all this air. Now, air has, as you can see, about 20% oxygen and about 80% nitrogen. That nitrogen, it's just along for the ride. This is lazy, it's not doing shit in there, right? So this stuff here, it's occupying space and you have to suck it in through your air filter and you have to push it out the tailpipe, which is work, uh, and you don't have to do quite as much of that with ethanol because you're getting some of this without any of this, for, well, not for free, you're paying for it, but you're getting it in your fuel. And that works a little bit like how a turbocharger or a supercharger works. The whole point of those is to get more oxygen in the engine so that you can burn more of these guys in the engine. And when you do that, when you've got a supercharger, you're blowing all these dudes in there, but you're also blowing a whole lot of these dudes in there. And these dudes aren't doing anything for you. These guys are just getting sucked in and blown out. And you've got to do work on them. Now, if you get nerdy and you do the math involving like molar densities and all that kind of stuff like that, if you burn E10, uh, versus E0, or you know, pure petroleum, you've got about 3% less mass of this stuff going out your tailpipe. That means your total mass of all the stuff that's being pushed out the tailpipe, all the combustion byproducts from, from blowing up all this stuff, what's going out your tailpipe is like 3.74% less when you're burning E10, just E10, versus E0. 3.74% of mass less out the tailpipe is kind of like the same as saying that your tailpipe flows, you know, 3.74% better. Uh, it's effectively the same idea. So if people are spending more money on a better flowing exhaust, well, they'd get the same effect by burning E10 versus E0. So you can see why you get more power that way. You're doing less work pushing the stuff out. You're getting more of this stuff inside your combustion chamber. And the only difference is, now you're paying for this. Usually you get this for free in the air, right? Usually you get your oxygen for free. It just comes in, 
you know, 14.7 to one ratio gets sucked in through the air filter. You don't see it, you don't pay for it, it doesn't hit you on the wallet. But you are getting more of it in the chamber if you've got ethanol or an oxygenator in your fuel. Now how that comes in with regards to compression ratios, people say you can run a higher compression ratio because of the octane that's in ethanol, which is true. Ethanol has an octane rating of like 110 or something like that, which is way high. Uh, and that's cool, but the other side of it is because you're not pulling in all this extra inert nitrogen that's taking up space inside the combustion chamber, because you're not pulling this in, it's not in there. So I, I put together a couple more of these little cups here. When you're burning an equivalent amount of fuel, whether you're burning ethanol or petroleum, when you're burning an equivalent amount of fuel, this is what the ratio looks like inside the cylinder. And I don't know if these are gonna come up, show up real clean. This one here, the fuller one, this is what it looks like when you're burning petroleum. See how full that is? This is what it looks like when you're burning an equivalent amount of ethanol. The difference there is you can see that there's more room inside the one for the ethanol because you're not taking up as much room with the nitrogen that's inside of all the extra air you need to burn E0. The point I'm getting at with that is this is just kind of a quick example of why you have a lower compression ratio with petroleum versus the compression ratio that's available to you with ethanol. Because on ethanol, you're not taking up space inside that combustion chamber where it's getting compressed with a molecule that's not doing anything for you. So that's where that difference comes from. That's why you can run a higher compression ratio. That's why you can burn more fuel in an equivalent sized engine. Uh, but if you have any questions, pop them up there. Uh, meanwhile, I'm getting off this cold floor and I hope you have a good evening.